there are a bunch of questions that people have already started asking uh, but before i dive into those few questions i want to uh, ask a few initial questions uh, one is that uh, how well is am being adopted at this point of time uh, so, especially in the big companies i would also want to understand that a little bit like say say facebook apples and amazons and all those uh, companies that are there are they also adapting it, adopting it at this point of time and also in the world context how how well is it being adopted yeah um that, i mean obviously like anyone who's investing in something and wants to know like you know who else am i like who else am i working with here and who else is like beta tested this so when amp launched about i want to say 5 years ago yeah i think our like birthday is coming in october or something like that um the initial idea was news pages are so slow and they're written with pop ups and we wanted to solve that problem so we've seen very good adoption in, like the news ecosystem um especially since um like initially when we launched amp we worked with news publishers to gather that feedback so we've seen very strong um we've seen very strong adoption there times of india here in india new york times uh, washington post wall street journal uh, der spiegel the guardian like we've gotten most of the top publishers out there and the fact that we have wordpress as a cms enabled and we even have like we're working with other cmss also means our reach is higher more recently we started working with e-commerce companies as well and we've seen very strong adoption there um in e-commerce like there's we do lack some like common component support so for example we don't have a payments uh, a component for amp payments so that does like uh, hinder adoption but for example what you can do is do is like create an entirely amp site and then just have that be non amp as well so we've definitely seen success with e-commerce as well um when it comes to like larger companies like um facebook or like apple etc like they aren't like pushing out content so much right it's like more like apps etc and like we really believe like amp, amp is more like content forward um so like not so much adoption like the, the facebook and the twitters but like twitter for example will link to amp ca- cached amp pages which means again you like get that uh great feeling as well all right uh, okay so uh, but do you have any numbers in the sense that uh, uh Sorry. that because uh, i i know google probably is the only company that can tell most accurately predict the number of websites in the world uh, uh and uh, and therefore i guess they would also be able to uh, most accurately say that okay we are we have reached 1% of the websites in the world or something like that uh, uh, is that something that you can share uh, would you have any knowledge about that so publicly sharing it uh, i know that the n- numbers we shared back in like april of 2019 yes. so year ago was you can you can tell that yeah that can be that's a good reference point up uh, that was that was about in, in the 30 billions i think 30s billion oh, 30 billion 30 billion of uh, amp amp pages or something like that there there are 30 billion amp pages out there in the world like yeah. don't know like how it is right now okay so i don't i i don't know how to translate that into a percentage but okay there is there is a huge number of amp pages already out in the world yeah. so there are definitely set a uh, good a number of people who can help out in in learning how to implement amp i guess uh yeah. the next uh uh thing i had is who is creating these amp components uh how much is it within uh, uh the the core amp teams per view and how much are the uh, is the uh, is there a larger community at this point of time who is also creating these components yeah um we actually had our contributor summit and i learned that we had about 1100 contributors which blows my mind um like for 5 years but yeah like um at, we do have a core group of excuse me we do have a core group of amp engineers uh, excuse me that do con- contribute to the project and like a large part of the components do come from them but then you'll have someone like pinterest come and say listen uh, infinite scroll of like being able to see an infinite scroll of pins is very important to us and so they contributed the infinite scroll component uh for example ali express who has an amp first experience like wanted said like you know what we don't have a way of like star rating something so we want to contribute a component for that so we definitely have contributions from like all types of industries and like they make up our 1100 number but a large part of it does like come from the core team as well and they're about actually i don't know how many the core team would be sorry that's okay uh, that's okay but there's a reasonable amount of contribution that is coming from outside the core team as well oh absolutely uh, okay so the next thing that i wanted to ask is that when you said that uh, the developer can easily pick here are some of the carousels which is the carousel that you want that's clearly setting up uh, a, a further divide between a designer and the developer in the team right uh, uh, so how do you balance the expectations that ways uh, because a designer would want to have their own stake on the website experience as well 
Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and that's why like we work, we don't just like have like a bunch of people write a component like out of nowhere. Like we have a full product process for it. where like, we also research for accessibility and everything. Um, the idea is um, on the AMP team, we want to ship the most unopinionated component. So like it should have the basic skeleton. Let's take a carousel, right? It should have a back and a forward arrow. It should have some pagination dots. What the pagination dots look like, what the back and forward arrows look like, customize it to your heart's content, right? How many slides you want to show? Like, absolutely. The basic infrastructure, like you should have pagination dots. You can remove them if you want. Like you can skip those. We provide you with like the custom components, like the custom okay. building blocks that would make up that larger component. And then how you style it is absolutely up to you. But we also believe that we need to be a little bit opinionated. So for example, um, this, this is a very common complaint that we get is like our carousel is statically sized, right? So if you have different sized images, it will take up the same amount of size. So they're like, no, we want it to go up and down, but then like, but that causes cumulative layout shift. So like we we, we do believe in taking a stance here for the user. And after that, we like leave like a lot of the customization, a lot of the design and being brand conscious, right? If you're Times of India and you have a certain brand color, you should absolutely be able to brand all components with that. But we will take a few like design constraints and put that just to make sure that we are doing well on these numbers. All right, so speaking of constraints, and complaints because you use both those two words in your uh, answer. Oh, uh, I I want to uh, understand the impact of AMP on the different teams that are there. So let me just talk. If I segregate, there are three teams. And following this, I'll also uh, I, uh, ask a question by uh, Puneet. In fact, probably I'll ask if Puneet, if you're there after this answer, I'll ask you to ask your question because quite relevant ones that you've asked. Uh, if you divide a, a, a website team into the main content team, people who decide what is the information that should be going out there, people who design, which is visu visually layout wise, experience wise, what are the uh, factors that we have to consider and people who develop and they probably take decisions around uh, uh, the speed, the performance and also how it should be implemented, software architecture and so on and so forth. For all these three teams, if you can tell us what are the things that uh, these teams will uh, not be restricted on or not be constrained and what and what are the things that AMP does enable them to do uh, and probably for good reasons AMP constrains them to do. So let's take them one by one. Do you feel that uh, the content teams would be any way impacted or have you been hearing feedback that from different content teams that hey we want information in this way uh, or we want this type of information to be there uh, but AMP is not enabling us to do that. So uh, is there anything uh, like that for content teams? Um, no, like, because we're like an open source team, it's always been like, oh, for example, way back when you don't have an accordion, right? I want to hide this content and then show it later. So that kind of falls into visual, but uh, it's like very much like people who are like thinking about what kind of content, how it's structured on a page, like that's like, it's an HTML framework. Like think about how you want to lay out or think about what information you want to put there and you can, you want to structure it in certain paragraphs, absolutely go forward. Like that, that I think is like the least, um, the most empowered. Let's put it this way. All right. That's the most empowered, the content teams. So even I, from what I understood and where AMP comes in, it comes after the content. So the content team can define uh, free, almost freely what they want and how they want things. So now from the design point of view, uh, what are the things that you feel a designer should be aware of or wary of uh, that, okay, uh, when I'm working with on an AMP site, these are the things I have to accept that I will not be have be able to do, but I have these many tools at my disposal so that I can uh, make the designs uh, more uh, uh, specific to the brand, specific to the uh, how I expect. Yeah. So this answer will kind of go into like the third group, which is developers. So for example, if you're a visual animator, right? Um, and you think that the button going big and small and like blinking is really good, uh, but we don't like to make sure that animations are performant, we only support a certain set of like animations. So like you can scale, you can move opacity, you can do like some transforms. But if you want to change the background image repeatedly, that's something you be, that we don't allow to do because it's non-performant. So as long as what you're doing like can be done in a performant way and that kind of like falls on the developers uh, head a little bit. Uh, again, like I think like less risk more restricted than the previous one, but still less restricted than developers. But, but I, I feel that the answer that you're giving is something that may be very hard for a designer to comprehend or understand. Uh, because uh, because what really constitutes as uh, impact on the experience or, or, or perform, what impacts the performance? So are there any guidelines around this? So one was clearly, you said motion, animation, movements. Uh, those are one thing that you said. Uh, is there a complete freedom in the CSS aspect of things or in the aspect of uh, all the C 
uh, other than I, I guess the animations, I, I've heard that in animations also, there are certain types of animations preferred over the others. So are there yes. any general guidelines on those which can, uh, which a designer can easily translate into, okay, now I clearly understand these are few things that I will not be able to do. Yeah. So yeah, if we like split it up into like CSS and animations, like since you were talking about animations, so Chrome has an API called web animations, right? And the idea is to be able to execute these animations on a worker thread. So the ones that they think that they can execute on a worker thread, which is, um, yeah, like I said, like uh, opacity scaling and like certain transforms, those you can absolutely do. And we like fully okay. support Like you can even do those on the first viewport. Those that they don't believe can be like put on a worker thread. We don't like support, um, especially like in the first viewport, imagine like, your first viewport is janky. You can do it like later on. For example, if you want to like make a blinking image later, like down the viewport, uh, much down, that's fine. So that's the animation aspect of things. For CSS, um, the constraint here is we've like seen people like ship entire like bootstrap files, et cetera, and only use like 10% of it. I think Chrome did a study that about 80% of sites use 10% of their CSS. So we have, we had a 50 kilobyte CSS limit saying that, a, your CSS has to be on the page so that we're not, we're saving you that round trip and B, it has to fit within 50 kilobytes per page. Uh, we extended that to 75 kilobytes because we did like some work with uh, the folks at WordPress and saw that a lot of themes like do need that extra space, right? So we like extended it to 75 kilobytes, but that is a restriction for sure. And like, actually, thank, we, thank you for like splitting it up that way. Mm -hmm. So the amount of CSS you're shipping down the wire is constrained, but that just means that that's easily dealt with in your build system, right? You can make, you can have like an entire theme pattern, but then your build system only takes in the CSS that is needed. So as a designer, you're still like, you're still setting up your same theming or like your same bootstrap infrastructure. It's like, then you work with a developer to say, Hey, make sure that the one that's shipping per page is like less than 75 kilobytes. All right. So from what I understand, uh, if you are uh, uh, coming from a visual communication design background, uh, earlier, the thing that you used to focus most on uh, is, uh, what do I need to communicate? Uh, what is the content on the page? How can I best uh, uh, beautify it in certain ways, uh, make it aesthetic, uh, present it well, and so on and so forth. And from there, you used to then uh, go on to the developer and say, look, I've come up with this design, you must implement it. Uh, and you almost expect that that will get implemented. And I think that worldview has to slightly turn for designers to able to understand that what aspects of design is actually contributing to more number of lines in CSS what aspects of design is actually uh, uh, creating uh, uh, movements in the screen. And also more technically, if you're actually uh, designing animations and all, you need to understand which of the animations as what Nana was pointing out runs on the main thread or blocks uh, the rendering in certain ways. Uh, and what are the, anim uh, which parts of the animations inside CSS you have to just carefully understand the technicalities of how CSS animations will work so that you know which are the things that AMP will allow and AMP will not allow. So it kind of shifts the lens from pure information and communication to what are the technical uh, implications of those designs. So that has to be reasonably well understood for designers as well. Yeah, I think the CSS is like less of a problem, um, especially like I've, like I've been working with, like for example, for amp.dev, like our visual designers, like here's a bunch of CSS and we're like, okay, we'll just, we have a build system that takes out whatever's needed per page. So right. I think like with the CSS, it's like pretty much the, the same unless it is like very heavy. And in which case, if you, as a, if you as a visual designer find that your CSS is not fitting within like that your developer has come back and said this, have your developer file an issue on us. We want to know about that. Because in that case, like this is information that we need to be taking into consideration, right? Don't just silently take it. File an issue on us. We want to right. hear about it. The last group, uh, Nena, are uh, developers. Uh, how, how does it impact their work now? So I think the biggest change for a developer's mindset is the fact that um, up till now, developers, like they'd write their own JavaScript, they'd pick a few components and like kind of hack them together. Um, but now with like AMP, you have like these HTML components or like these web components that you're supposed to use and they do the JavaScript for you. So that's a shift in, I would say it's a shift in mindset, not so much a constraint, um, which like is anytime you like pick up a new framework, like you, pick, you start working in React, you start working in Angular, it's a change in mindset. Um, so I think that's like a shift. I wouldn't call it a constraint, number one. Um, I think number two is you have to, for example, how do I express this? Um, I think the fact that um, you're like using these components means you also like need to like learn a new bunch of documentation and like how to work with a new kind of framework. And I guess that's like just an extension of number one. And then 
the good thing is the one thing you don't have to learn is all about these like performance things. Um, you can just like, as long as you're like running your page on Lighthouse and if you see that an AMP page is slow, you, you can then just like offload it onto another team and say, hey, you, the AMP team, your page is slow. And like, I'm, I'm just using your components and then we'll fix it for you. So I think like that's like a shift in mindset. It's like your performance team is outside your business, uh, which is like an interesting switch. So I don't think like with developers, there's as much constraints. It's more like a shift in mindset, which enables a whole bunch of other things. All right. Okay, this kind of nicely ties, ties into Puneet's question. Puneet, are you there? I am allowing you to talk. Uh, you can probably ask your question because now you have a very pointed question around uh, development and implementation. Yeah, sure. Uh, can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Ah, hey, Nana. Uh, so Hi. the question that uh, I had was that, uh, uh, so we've experienced, uh, you know, we've tried AMP, uh, you know, with one of our sites and one of the challenges has been maintaining uh, updating the AMP version of our pages. So obviously we have our content pages that we've been, you know, maintaining. And now we've had AMP version of those pages. Uh, now as we update, uh, you know, uh, features around our content pages, like uh, the styling, the CTAs or uh, whatever, there's always this challenge of making sure that the AMP version is also updated. So my question is, have you heard this as a challenge from some of the other uh, sites that have AMP versions and what are your recommendations or what kind of solutions have those guys built in to essentially reduce this maintenance effect, uh, uh, you know? Yep. Uh, that's actually a great question and like kind of like um, picks up on like something else. So when we originally um, released AMP like back in 2015, people were creating paired AMP experience as like Puneet mentioned, which is they have their non AMP page and then they have an AMP equivalent, which shows up in like on mobile surfaces such as search, et cetera. Um, and that's like the, where the majority of AMP pages came in the start, which obviously meant that you had this dual maintenance cost, which means like, oh, I've, I've added a carousel or like I've moved my carousel from like the mid screen, like to the first viewport and now I have to go make that change in AMP which is contradictory to what I just said, right? It's like adding maintenance cost and not reducing it, exactly. uh, which is why um, what we've, <clears throat> excuse me, what we've asked developers to do is, and this is not possible for everyone, right? Um, is to think about, can we just go AMP first, which means make AMP the only way that you're creating content on mobile or on desktop or completely altogether. And we've seen a lot of people pick this up. For example, AliExpress's mobile website. So if you go to m.aliexpress.com on mobile, it's AMP first, right? It's completely written in AMP. There's no like, oh, if I go somewhere, like if, I, if I'm not in search, it won't show me the AMP page. No, if you go to m.aliexpress.com or you come at it from search, you're, still get, you're always going to be getting AMP. Their desktop experience is not AMP. Tasty.co, which like does a lot of a very like interesting quick food videos, which are always inspiring, like regardless of where you go, desktop or like... Uh, Mobile is AMP first. So that's what we've been like asking developers to do that. Yes, maintenance cost of like having this two code base is hard. And so if, if it's possible for you, think about investing in AMP first. And that could be like only like on mobile or it could be mobile and desktop. Um, and like, how, and like think, about, think about investing in that. We also understand now that that's not always possible for everyone. And which is why we're excited about this page experience announcement because you don't have to like, you don't have to feel forced into AMP you're picking AMP because you think it's useful for you. But if, for example, for any reason, you think that AMP first is not possible for you, such as, um, what can I give as an example here? For example, you don't like the fact that, like, you know, it's that uh, if you're being served from Google search, you will be cached. We're now working on solutions where you can say, you know what, I love everything about AMP. I just don't want to be cached by Google, right? That's just something I don't want to do because I'm an e-commerce company and like caching obviously is like a nervous thing, especially around sale times, right? You don't want cached information. You want to give the most up-to-date information. In that case, you can opt out of Google AMP cache. And like, we're thinking about like adding like flexibilities, but like really answer your question in short. Paired AMP comes with like this dual maintenance cost and we absolutely understand. And that's like concern we have heard from publishers. And that's why we encourage them to think about what pages can like actually benefit from AMP? And maybe we want to like invest in AMP first for those pages. So if your article pages are useful, invest in AMP first for them. If your product listing pages are like slow, invest in AMP first for them. Um, it's not a perfect solution for everyone, but that's, that's the direction we want people to be thinking about. Okay, yeah, interesting. Uh, fair enough. At least, uh, you know, we can discuss internally and think through it. That may make sense. Sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm completely uh, Puneet, confident that that's not a You have more questions. Uh, Puneet, please go ahead and ask the other questions that you have. 
Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, so the second question I have is primarily around e-commerce. So from the content perspective, uh, uh, we've experienced that AMP definitely makes sense given that you know a lot of our content uh, uh, is exposed on uh, the Google Discover uh, as well. But when it comes to the pure play e-commerce uh, sites, uh, uh, so, so when we talk AMP, essentially, uh, you know, uh, the head of marketing uh, or the business owner is essentially just thinking about uh, the effort versus gains perspective of uh, the implementation, right? Uh, so we haven't been able to, uh, I, I don't know if this is the right word, but we haven't been able to justify or find, uh, uh, you know, enough case studies or uh, material to make sure that AMP would make sense when it comes to um, e-commerce, uh, our e-commerce product listing landing pages as well to begin with, you know. Uh, so, I, I, I mean, I just wanted to pick your brains uh, as to how is the AMP adoption beyond the content uh, parts of the website or the publisher or the news, which which I understand, you know, where AMP definitely makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I'll like ki kind of summarize what I like said earlier. Like, like you said, we've like seen success with news publishers and with e-commerce, it's like, um, it's more of a recent effort to like invest in e-commerce um, and like, something like lacking payment support is definitely um, definitely like says, okay, so we would still have to have like AMP pages for product listings, but when they're checking out, it would have to be a non AMP experience because payments isn't supported. So that's definitely like a trade-off to make. I think um, the important thing to ask like your marketing team is like, you know, lay out your conversion funnel and see where are we losing users? If for example, you really believe that you're not getting like your, your, your conversion funnel is very small at the start then like, you know, AMP helps like give you that reach, um, like increase the reach part of your funnel. And the fact that every page is loading fast helps. Um, experiment, and I think the best way to like talk through is always to like, and this is, this is, this is not e-commerce specific advice. It's actually just like A-B tested. Like if, do you actually see that like, you know, having a faster page on your particular e-commerce company is actually converting more users? So maybe like A-B test and like give a certain amount of a population an AMP page and the other proportion of like, don't give them like an AMP page or just give them a normal, um, your non-AMP or like your canonical page and see what is coming out of it, right? Um, make, and uh, as to case studies, like AMP.dev appropriately being shown right here has like a whole bunch of case studies uh, for the e-commerce companies, like especially like a lot of Asian e-commerce companies are seeing a lot of success here. Um, Tokopedia, I think uh, Nikkei, uh, Nikkei in Japan is seeing some success with it. and a South Korean company that I cannot pronounce, but you will find it on amp.dev, right? We are seeing success there, but again, it's a conversation you need to have uh, with, your business, uh, with your business counterparts about where, what do we want to improve? If we want to improve reach, absolutely amp is a great thing. If we want to improve, if we think the payment funnel is like where people are losing out users, amp is not going to solve that for you, right? Maybe you need to add more payment supports and something else needs to be solved altogether. So having that conversation, regardless of what vertical you are, is like the first place. Yeah, so uh, fair point. And, uh, you know, we did look at a lot of case studies on the app side. I think, uh, and maybe it's our lack of looking at it, but one of the things that we kind of still do not uh, grasp enough looking at some of those case studies is the amount of effort uh, that even the initial, uh, you know, experiment would take. So let's say if I want to try an AMP version of a page and we'd of course go gradually around it, then, you know, it is always a question around what is the amount of effort it would take for us to uh, do this initial experiment. It isn't as simple as, right, uh, I, I don't know, I mean, disabling yep. a third party option. So that's where I think uh, a challenge is when, when it comes to, you know, at least starting to try and uh, feel the waters around them. That's, I, I feel very vindicated right now because that's something I've been like raising with our like DevRel team as well. It's like, this is all great, but like, this like this this pitches business and marketing, but it doesn't like convince a development TL or a tech lead or a CTO of like how much effort am I putting in? Am I putting fifty hours? Am I putting fifty days? Am I putting fifty engineers? That's absolutely something that's missing, and it differs from team to team. It differs on like what their like MVP prototype is, but we've seen that especially if you're using a CMS, like once you get like the relevant AMP plugin. So for Shopify, we have an AMP plugin. Uh, if you're on WordPress and Magento has a few extensions as well, we see that like those absolutely like make it much faster, but like converting a product landing page, we've seen people be able to do that in just a few days and then like getting the, being able to scale that like in a CMS is much easier. So we've definitely seen like short turnarounds in like product landing pages very specifically, which I think is a great way to like start experimentation, but your feedback is very well taken. 
especially by me and I will go haha our team and be like we need this information so right thank you thanks thanks yeah. for your questions puneet uh, uh, would like to move to some of the other questions as well uh, i mean i mean these are also very uh, uh, like practical questions that uh, puneet was asking uh, but moving on from this i just want to uh, touch upon a couple of things that i personally learned about i i i was not aware of these things which is the amp optimizer that being one of them and also the fact that uh uh Let me put it this way: uh, Is AMP optimizer meant if you're not using the CDNs? So you're on if, mute. Yeah. Uh, you can hear me, right? Yep. Yes. Uh, so yeah, AMP optimizer if is it is beneficial if you are not being served from an AMP cache. So the cache will do a lot of this for you. It will pick the correct image to show. It will make sure that um, the CSS is minimized correctly. It will make sure that like the AMP runtime is like not blocking. but if you aren't being served from an amp cache so for example somebody comes you at from you from origin then like it then you then you really get like the optimizer benefits right so uh, and also are there amp caches being run by any organization other than google uh, you were talking about bing uh, as well so does bing also run a similar amp cache yeah so uh, Uh, I believe Google and Bing are like the two ones that I know of, uh, but I'm sure Amp dot Dev has any other information. I All right, and this. and uh, uh, do you can you pick and choose where you are cached and where you are not cached? If you are cached and if you are not cached, are, are these controls available to you? So um, each of the both the caches. So for example, if you're coming from a Bing search, you will be served from the Bing Amp cache. So both, uh, at least the Bing and the Google Amp cache have like. cache and validation api so for example you can say no nope, uh, this has been cached for too long like uh, like you know invalidate this cache i want a new cache page both of them have like cache apis that you can like do uh, do a lot of this with if you're if you're um, sorry being served from a google amp cache um, search console also gives you some controls here to like for that specific end of things and like bing has similar tools as well so per cache you can definitely say you know what i don't want to be served from the google amp cache today but i'm fine with being served from the bing amp cache but you can uh, you can control or uh, uh, there is no uh, is is there any robots.txt equivalent to say that hey uh, because uh, uh, there might be more caches coming up in the future uh, yeah. and if you're saying that uh, the responsibility of invalidation and all is uh, is on you on a developer and you can't pick who all are caching you uh, at this point of time then uh, that can be a challenge yep so that's why currently the the way is to like what we would call an invalid amp page so for example just like make your page invalid in some way like do something like put 51 kilobytes i mean 76 kilo kilobytes of css in that would like throw you out of like the amp caches because the amp caches are checking for like validity uh we don't think that you should have to do that you shouldn't have to be like 75 kilobytes of css add like one more row that's not how you should go about doing it right so we are working on like adding giving you that support to say for example like have an attribute on your page and just say no cache and that just in opts you out of all the caches um automatically like when you just write the page got it and there's one audience question out there is it possible to create your own am uh, own amp cache server and inf or infrastructure and how does that work oh i don't know i am sure i am sure that, like i know that for example uh, when you're being rendered from um, the google amp cache you appear in what is called the amp viewer i know that you can create your own viewer experience for example um, if you are tiktok and you want to start showing amp pages you can like design your own viewer for that i don't know if you can have your own amp cache i'm sure you can uh, i can start digging into it while we are answer different questions all right cool uh moving on from the amp cache now what are the other questions out there so someone had asked uh, does it mean that amp can uh, be used to build the main website rather than separate amp pages along with standard html this is something that nena has already addressed that that is something that uh, she is giving as as an option uh, for you to uh, consider that you can build your main website using just amp or go amp first in a way so that kind of gets answered in this Uh, there are a couple of interesting question which I want to uh, ask later, but this is uh, related to the AMP optimizer as well. Is there any plan to include AMP optimizer for Drupal? Oh yes, uh, it's part of our agenda for at least this year. Uh, we need to like prioritize things, but definitely uh, Drupal, Cloudflare, Docker, uh, Fastly 
are definitely like some things we're like prioritizing. Uh, Netlify is has a, has an AMP optimizer extension that somebody somebody from the community contributed. Yeah, uh, and that's like something that I hadn't put on the slide. But uh, if you go like if you go to amp.dev, they'll like show you what our like roadmap also looks like. So, good question. All right. Uh, okay, so this is also gets answered. Uh, there's one question called, is it possible to create AMP pages using Flutter or React.js or other frameworks? So, yeah, um, if, for example, if you're do, using React, like if you have like, if you have like the router level, so like if you're using Next, again, you can create like AMP pages as well. Um, when it comes to uh, Flutter, Vue, et cetera, as well, like we've experimented and like it's still possible. What you're basically doing is instead of outputting HTML, you're saying, hey, like put the AMP runtime and like it's AMP components. So yeah, anywhere where like your template, anywhere you're templating, it's it's theoretically possible. If you have a problem, file an issue. But so All right. Uh, so another uh, quick question, which has come on my chat, which is uh, Pandu Furwani has asked that why AMP on my web? It doesn't appear in the SERP search engine results page, but AMP HTML valid already in console, nor in AMP test tool. Mm, okay. I'm not clear about the question. Are you clear about the question? This is there on the chat that, that's yeah. uh, at 1124 Zainab at Putin. Yep. So it's like, yeah, why is AMP not appearing on my web search? I mean, it's, it's appearing like if they go on origin, but not on like Google search. Um, but it's like, it's showing up in the console or in the AMP test tool. That's, um, so what's, I can't comment on why it's not showing up on search without like looking at like somebody's search console, unfortunately, because there's like a bunch right. of things. That, um, definitely check like indexing or something like that. Uh, uh, right. So this will be very hard for uh, anyone to answer with such little detail. So probably you'll have to come into uh, Zoom, ask your question live. Uh, there is another question out there from uh, Kamran Hamid, uh, who, uh, who has asked, should I use AMP for uh, all the apps? Or is, is there any specific category like the news pages that I should use AMP for and not everything else? So, um, I think like depending on the vertical, I think a good place to start is like what, like for example, if a user is uh, searching for something, right? They, they aren't going to like click on your homepage. They're going to click on the article and read it. So I think that's a good place to start. And then as you like, you know, as you see the worth prove out, it can go to like other pages. So like where, where, where is the user going to come in first? That could be article pages, that could be product landing pages, that could be comment pages, for example, if you're a social media platform. Uh, those are like a good place to start. And then you should expand if you're seeing the, if you're seeing the uplift in like reach or if you're seeing the better like performance improvements. I, I do want to add at this, at this point of time that some of these very specific questions and some, some of these things which are very much a discussion, uh, whether you should do it, you should not do it. And even some of the questions that Puneet had asked, uh, we, we plan to do a, a more uh, advanced or in detail conversation of this was more of a overview and introduction gives you a good taste of different things. Uh, but some of these questions, you're most welcome to join a couple of weeks down the line. We'll plan a session where uh, there can be more intense debate and discussion around AMP and how to implement it. Uh, now, I want to move on to some of couple of larger questions that audience has put in, and that was definitely there on my uh, uh, on my plate as well. Uh, and this is a question that Ambika has asked, and I'll start with uh, her question and maybe uh, take it from there. So, she had said that like your point about the core team and others nowadays, it's tougher to have an unopinionated stand stance, and that is right. I agree with that. Uh, I guess AMP has been criticized for a gatekeeper style. Could you tell us more about AMP ethics and committee, if any, and if there are any links out there? Uh, so in this question, uh, let me first uh, just ask the gatekeeper style aspect of things, because that has definitely been a, a point of concern that everyone says. Like, of course, uh, AMP is a solution for you to uh, 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 just as much or as, not as much, let me not compare, but like, just like Gatsby might be a solution that you want to make a fast website. Here is a, a set of uh, very good practices put together, bundled together for you. Use Gatsby, make all your websites in Gatsby. Similarly, here are a good set of performance things packaged in together. Here is AMP, use AMP. Uh, but one of the challenges with AMP that comes is, is that uh, A, uh, uh, because there are certain very strict restrictions and the fact that it has to be, uh, uh, and one of, some of the best benefits you get is because uh, it's coming from Google's caches, uh, 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 the, the, the CDNs and all, uh, those are, and, and the fact that 
the the it it is uh, uh, led by uh, a large organization which is uh, which really drives what are the benchmarks that we should agree on and and push it through because there are definitely other like uh, the the core web vitals are, are is a very great set of standards that 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 you're putting in uh, but you're never say you're always saying that uh, we this is something that will prioritize uh, we recommend these are recommendations uh, but in the amp space they don't become recommendations they become almost like you have to follow this that's when you get the benefits uh, or otherwise you don't uh, so nena what's your thoughts around those uh, any response to that that's um, okay let me break it down by like right so um, when it comes to yes so for example um, for example uh, yeah let's start with top stories carousel right like that's something we talked about earlier like up till now amp was like this was a space reserved for amp and that's because we believe like at that point anybody who's worked in standards will tell you moving standards is hard it'll take like 5 10 years getting every browser to agree to like ship at the same time and so this was like our way of like testing out the waters and a lot of this like information about like things how to like make sure things aren't moving about have actually come from like amp like you know leading a lot of this and like i think malta who's like part of our technical steering committee which is something i'll explain has like written a really great series of blogs on amp.dev again which talk about like what are the principles that amp started off with and why they're good and how like we intend to make them scale them to like the wider standards like for example lazy loading in images is something that the amp team has been pushing forward for a very long time and like we're finally getting it 5 years later right so that's why like um there's it it is a little bit more opinionated in that regard and when it comes to like who's actually doing a lot of the work like we we we've been open source from the start and now like now we're part of the open js foundation along with things like node for example uh where the open js is like has our has a governing body such as a tsc which contributes to it and like i mean not even contributes it actually literally technically steers our direction and it's nine members i want to say um and it has platforms like pinterest it has cd cdns like pantheon um twitter again another platform that distributes amp microsoft on it um it has googlers on it it has axios which is a news publisher on it um so we like we have like the widest like breadth of amp developers and like web developers who are actually thinking about like what are the problems web developers are facing and how can we solve it using amp and now with like this this launch of like coming soon launch of like page experience it means that uh whatever technology stack you pick absolutely go for it right you're comfortable in something go for it just meet these like things that are good for users how you do it is like not important to us and like our our idea on amp is to make it the easiest and that means like we'll have to post constraints but so will other frameworks to actually like have you meet it right you can't just ship 3 megabytes of css and have a good lcp and have a good fid that's hard to do um so i think like that kind of deals with both like i accidentally answered the ethics I, and the part of it as well i mean right 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 that that makes uh, that makes sense so from what i understand uh, there are a set of good practices that amp is enforcing and the direction in which what google is taking like for the longest time uh, amp always made fast plus seo and by seo every most people meant that we'll be there at the top rank uh, and that is where you want to be because that's where you'll be clicked more and that's actively in 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 the communication that we hear all, also it featured in your presentation as well that if you're featured there that that's actually going to increase the number of people who come to your website but slowly it seems google is opening up and saying that okay we you don't have to follow exactly amp but as long as you follow and meet these benchmarks we'll also let you into the top tier zone is that that's right uh, nena no, i'm i'm correct that's where we're expressing it like page experience and core web vitals is like this threshold to clear amp is a tool to help you jump like so you can clear it so now is enough more, more people start using uh, or meeting these benchmarks what what is the the life Uh, of amp because at the end of the day the larger community at even today is still the html uh, the the w3c and the, and and the things that they uh, they are deciding the standards that are uh, getting included there uh, now if a large number of websites look at uh, because search, uh, google's search ranking has been a huge influence on the development community to keep improving their websites uh, this is the first time google is coming up uh, or or at least uh, we are seeing they're coming up with oh here is a solution as well for you to actually meet uh, what we are say- saying is a good practice uh, in case lots of people start meeting the good practice uh, how how long do we feel that uh, because jumping on a new technology like amp is an investment uh, and then you have to know that 
uh, well, this will actually get, keep sustaining itself. And if the top carousel is given to everyone and everything is given to everyone, then people might start drifting away and then will AMP stay there for long. So I think as long as developers like in a world where everyone has perfect knowledge and everyone is able to create performance sites, there is no future for AMP. That is not the case. That is not the world, right? And so there'll always be a space for AMP to help make things easier, uh, to help make people who use CMSs and don't under, like, and maybe don't understand performance, there'll always be a space for AMP. We'll just be pushing things like forward, like AMP might change. Like right? right now we're exploring a project called Bento AMP. And the idea is currently you can only use AMP components on AMP pages. So if you like an AMP carousel, for example, it's my favorite component, if you can't tell, uh, you can't use it outside an AMP page, right? It needs to be on an AMP page, but we don't think that, that, that there's any reason to do so. For example, if you as a performance engineer have seen, you know what, the carousel is like a cause for CLS issues and it's a cause for FID, like scrolling is working too slowly. I've heard good things about AMP carousel, I'll use it on my page. And that's the only AMP component I will have on my page, right? So we do see space for like AMP to evolve as like needs are being met. And absolutely, like if the more other frameworks are like doing well, like the AMP team's project is like a user first open web forever, right? We want to like take everyone up, whether it be AMP, great. If not, we'll keep working with standards bodies to like, you know, make sure that these are incorporated into standard ways as well. So, right. Uh, I, there's a very short question. And then uh, I think the final question can be asked by Arki, who has put in a question and then we'll close off. The small question first is how AMP is, uh, this is asked by Anil Chaudhary. How AMP is compared with uh, progressive web apps? Can AMP be a progressive web app and AMP both? So can you have both a PWA and an AMP together in one? Yes. Uh, so there's multiple ways you can think about like AMP and PWA coming together. So one is, for example, uh, your, when somebody comes to your page for the first time, it's an AMP page. So they've gotten a really fast experience. Your AMP page loads up a service worker and every frequent, every like, consequential visit, sorry, that's the word, is like a PWA experience. So that's one way of like thinking about a PWA AMP approach or what we call a PWAMP. We're not very good at naming things, PWAMP. <laughs> uh, or like another way is like, yes, it's always a PWA, but like instead of rendering HTML, you're rendering AMP components. So instead of like, you're getting like the fast AMP components, but it's like a PWA shell. So there's like different ways of thinking it together. And again, like, I think if you go to the learning page on AMP.dev, there's like a guide which like, Paul Bacchus has written about like how to think about PW AMP integration, but absolutely you can, you can still have a service work and you can have things like add to home screen, et cetera, like things that really make up a great PWA you can do with AMP as well. Uh, okay. Uh, the final question, it will be great. Uh, sorry to go a few minutes over time and I hope you can bear with us. Uh, the final question I'd ask Arki, please ask your question. I think that's a great closing question. I would say. Uh, I'll just allow you to, uh, yeah, now you can speak. Great. Uh, thanks for the talk, Naina. I have a general question about balancing user privacy versus web performance. Um, to give you some context, I worked on open technology for a number of years, and I currently help nonprofits and uh, activists on uh, frontline. Um, so I'm really not very comfortable with so using something like AMP, but like, can you comment on how we could have a performance without infringing on user privacy? Thanks. So um, in regards to AMP, I'll answer it in two ways. One is like just creating an AMP page and the other is like creating a page that is served from a Google AMP cache or a Bing AMP cache. So when it comes to creating an AMP page, right, this is these are HTML components, uh, just like, I mean, it, these are packaged HTML components, right? If you take a carousel, it is basically a bunch of images, stuck to, it's a bunch of images in a div. So the same level of security that you're getting with, uh, for example, just using an HTML component, you're getting with AMP baked in. Um, if you have like very specific questions about components, let us know, absolutely, like it's incredibly important. We have like, we, uh, so, I'll answer it like I'll go back a little. Our TSC, for example, has like multiple working groups who like specialize in things. I contribute to the UI and accessibility working group, so that's my expertise. We have a security and privacy working group, which like has people from like different companies whose job it is to make sure that everything that goes into this is like approved by them because they are the experts and make sure that it is secure and uh, it is secure and respects users' privacies because that is absolutely like one of our tenants is user first and that means it should be accessible, it should be user forward, it should be secure, it should like respect users' data. Uh, and things like, for example, as like different countries like create like 
privacy laws such as GDPR, um, CCPA in the US. Um, I know Brazil's come up with a new one, right? We're always making sure that our consent system supports that. So like we have a component called AMP consent, which supports all of these as they're coming out, as they're coming out, right? We make sure that we're staying on the cutting edge there so that developers don't have to worry about like thinking about, okay, it's GDPR is opt in, but CCP is opt out. How do I get it to work together, right? We like deal with all of that for you. When it comes to being served from a AMP cache, again, like we don't have any, it's like the idea is like the, the three Ps we associate with uh, uh, with our cache is privacy preserving pre-rendering, right? It's, it's pre-rendered absolutely to make it fast, but it's done in a privacy preserving way. Like we don't, we don't send any user information about, okay, the user seems like they're going to click on this page. So like, Hey, 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 go send them ads. Right. Absolutely not. Um, it's done in an anonymous fashion and it's like incredibly important. And I know that there's like two videos at least on like our YouTube page that talk about exactly how we make that happen. And there's blog posts to that effect as well. So Privacy is like absolutely something that's important to us. I'm personally a big accessibility champion. There are definitely security and privacy champions in the team where it's, like, it's their day job to think about this all the time. But thank you for like asking that question. I think it's an important one to like talk about and a good one to right. end on. Right, thanks. thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for uh, answering all these questions. Some of them were definitely uh, critical questions as well. Uh, and thanks for uh, taking out time to patiently answering all of them. Uh, just, I'd like to summarize that what we learn at least from the uh, Nana stocks uh, uh, is that there are several good practices that are there in the world of technology. AMP is packaging it them for you. It's almost like having uh, Google developers work to fix your own performance issues, uh, or if not Google, at least the AMP community working. Uh, that's the, probably the better way to say, say the AMP community working to solve your performance issues, your accessibility issues, and other, other challenges that not everyone can uh, uh, keep up to. Uh, AMP is one way of achieving it, and how Nana has clearly uh, pointed out, uh, uh, as long as you can achieve them, uh, it's uh, at least how the roadmap goes. Uh, it, it, the plan is that uh, as long as you can achieve them, that uh, Google and every, every, every other, the ecosystem around it wants to treat you equally, uh, but AMP is just a way to get there. Uh, that's, uh, have I summarized it right? Nana? Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks. And uh, thanks, Nana. Thanks, uh, uh, Hasgeek and all, uh, as a closing of this, uh, conversation, uh, you can, uh, and anyone can, uh, come in and, and give proposals, send in proposals or tell us what you want to hear about in the next few sets of, uh, series in, in this content web series that we have, uh, we, in the next few weeks, we are going to talk, touch upon technical SEO again. We are going to talk about uh, touch upon voice search. Uh, we are going to do another uh, round of AMP discussions, uh, maybe more from an implementation point of view that people who are getting their hands dirty, what kind of challenges they are facing and all. Uh, and we want to have more design oriented talks as well. So if, if any of you are there uh, who want to propose a design oriented talk, please go to hasgeek.com slash content web slash proposals and put in uh, what kind of talk you want to have and what to see. Uh, that's all from my side. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Nana, once again. Uh, and thanks, Hasgeek. Bye. Take care. Have a good night. Thank you. Have a good day, everyone. Bye.